All praises unto you. How about Jimmy Alshai? Double honesty, apostles of GMS, and honest truth brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And um, we get into some scriptures right here. And um, you know, I needn't tell you about what's going on out there in the world, but you should know it already. In that you've got, um, you know, you got it to where re just recently you had this situation out there in the Baltic Sea with the Russians and pretty much how the Russian jets, how they flew over uh, uh, an, an aggressive, which was an aggressive maneuver, all right, as um, as the, you know, so, the so-called United States described it as, they described it as an as um, aggressive maneuver, man, all right, when they flew over their, their ship that they had out there based in the Baltic Seas. But that's what we're gonna get more of right now, man, all right? This is the time when the Lord's beginning to visit the, the world which he created, as spoken about in the book of Second Ezra, the, uh, around about the eighth chapter, which I'm gonna get into before I get, but before I get into that, I wanted to get Mark 13th chapter, all right? Because the basic things in the scriptures, man, they say a lot, all right? And those basic things, if you ain't sanctified by way of your how about shimmy outside to where you was gonna understand and receive those basic things, you wasn't just gonna get it, man. You wasn't gonna get into the meaty parts or anything like that because a, a good foundation, right? That's what's gonna set forth the, the understanding, all right? And the tools that you need to get the, into the deeper understandings, all right? So let's go to Mark the 13th chapter. And then I read from I read from the fourth verse. Okay, so this is this is this is the Lord, right? And he was speaking to the disciples, and pretty much one of the disciples had come up to him and said to him, "He said, look, you're saying these things about." Uh, um, Pretty much the Lord said, you know, one of the disciples came up to him and said, look what manner of stones these are, all right? And look how grand these buildings are, which is, you know, hey, if, it's, if, it, if it looks nice to above his eye, it looks nice, isn't it? So he rolled up to what, he, he rolled up onto the Lord and he, he basically reiterated that same sentiment. And the Lord was in a, in a heavy spirit and responded to him, pretty much saying, as you're going to see in the scriptures, there's going to come a point in time when there's not going to be left one stone left upon another, which is the times that we're living in right now, man. Okay, all of this talk about nuclear war and nuclear summits, all right, and NATO, you know, increasing their military activities out there in uh, within 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 the EU. Okay, those are old times, and those are all rumors of wars, which is the times that we're getting into. We see we're getting into a very spiritual time. All right. Oh, you're funny, right, asshole? All right, we're getting into a time where we're getting very spiritual. It's a very spiritual time right now, man. Okay. This is this is the time when the Lord's getting to return back. So you're gonna to have to wear different people. Hey, things like that's gonna happen, man. Okay, things like that's gonna happen. But see, the Most High is gonna put the, the the spirit upon the men of the Lord that you ain't gonna be able to gainsay or nor resist, man. See, the word's gonna go up there, man. All right, just like how the Scripture says, and this is pertaining to the twelve tribes of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, right? They're gonna see their prophets, man, and their prophets ain't gonna be the teachers, the prophets. All right, they ain't gonna be removed into a corner anymore. They're gonna be out there teaching this word. Telling you that you are hard-headed people, all right. You need to turn on to your by shimmy outside, lest you be destroyed by where the, the ICBM commissions are gonna come here. And if those don't get you, gonna get hit by the famines. And if that doesn't get you, you're gonna be hit, hit by all kind of grievous things, man. All right. This is the time when all kind of heavy things is gonna be happening, man. All right. Mark the thirteenth chapter and the fourth verse. It says, "Tell us when these things shall be, and when, when and what shall be the signs of these things." shall be fulfilled in your house. I answering them, then began to say, take heed, lest any man deceive you. So, you're supposed to take heed. Now, how do you take heed? You get into the scriptures. You match the scriptures up with what's happening out there within the world, man. You match the fact that you got all kinds of scoffers coming up on the scene. You matched up with the scriptures, all right? The scripture says in the book of Second Peter, the third chapter, all right, uh, this know that the, uh, uh, the, in the uh, last days, perilous times, you're gonna have scoffers walking after their own lust, man. All right, roughly paraphrasing that scripture, okay? Because that was going to be an indicator that, that we're living in the last days. That, that you was going to have scoffers. Scoffers being, meaning what? People that was going to come up and rise up and talk against this, this truth, man. Although they don't have no backing, no stand for, no standing. They don't stand for nothing, all right? They're not, they're not pushing nothing other than their own emotional agenda, all right? Which is a scoffer, man, all right? That's what a scoffer does. He just pushes out emptiness, vanities, man. All right, and that's, that goes back into what the other, what the other precept says, man, where it talks about how men is going to be lovers of themselves, man. All right, I believe that's in the book of Corinthians. 
all right? They're gonna be love them themselves. And when you love yourself, man, you just wanna do whatever. You want everybody to fall underneath the, your own vibration, man, all right? You want everybody to be under the rule and thumb of your thinking, okay? But your rule and thumb of, and thinking has nothing to do with the truth, okay? But see, that was gonna be an indicator to let you know that this is one of, this, we're in the last days right now, man, all right? It's back in the book of Mark, uh, Mark the 13th chapter on the 4th verse and says, In your house I answer and then began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. So you was going to have it to a, a, a numerous amount of uh, uh, individuals, right? Print, uh, 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 individuals, ideas, and so on and so forth that was going to come and they, they're going to try to lead you to believe that that's the truth. Okay? For instance, you're going to have it to where you had Cesar Bourget. Cesar Bourget, who was uh, the son of Pope Alexander, that was fifth or something like that. All right, part of the, uh, the, the Bourget family, the first Karen family, when they was when they perceived that they was getting ready to get back into power, that being the um, the um, the uh, the beast that was wounded unto death. All right, but then they came back, which was the so-called Roman Empire, which was going to come back now as, as NATO and America and so on and so forth. It's spoken about within the Book of Revelations. All right, when they perceived that they was getting, you know, uh, 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 getting back into power, what did they say? They say, look, let's. Whitewash all of the images that you got out there of these icons of these Negroes and so on and so forth that you had out there within Europe, that you had out there within England, and you still got all of them out there in places like Russia and so on and so forth, known as the, the icons. And they did a thing that's known as iconoclasm, which was the defacing, right, of the images of the uh, of the of the icons of uh, and our forefathers, right, which were kings and rulers and so on and so forth out there within places like Europe and so on and so forth. Now they were known as the Moors, the Scots, right, the English and so on and so forth, all right? And what later happened was when the Borgias and all the East who came into power, they took up on all of those names that they were left behind because you can't destroy the record, right? You can't completely destroy the record. You got to deface it so nobody, you know, because they, they say it's pretty much a good lie is, the, is one that has the most truth in it. So you keep the vast majority of the truth, the fact that you had King Henry the Eighth, the fact that you had King James and so on and so forth, but you just defaced the images, all right? But see, we had so many images out there because it was a, a period of a thousand years of rulership that you pretty much had it to where um, it was it, it was nigh unto impossible to destroy all of those images, man. It was nigh unto impossible, and that's, and the most I left that as a remnant for what? For the, when the brothers were going to come into this thing, they was going to perceive that this, this is the people that, that it was talking about, man. All right, that was going to be taken down at this point. All right, they was going to have the enemy come into rulership at this point, and the enemy was going to deface the image because that's prophesied within the scriptures in the book of Job, the ninth, that the ninth chapter on the 24th verse. All right, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. How we know he's the wicked? The book of first Mac, the book of first Maccabees, the first chapter on around about the seventh verse where it says, Alexander and his generals came into power, and after they came into power, wickedness was multiplied within the earth. If they were righteous, then by deduction, righteousness would multiply within the earth. Because the scripture also says in the book of Proverbs, when the righteous are in rulership, right, the people rejoice. All right, because why? Because they're following after the ordinances of righteousness, and righteousness brings forth what? Joy. <laughs> but when the wicked are in rulership, the people's going to mourn. Because what? Because wickedness, ergo sin, brings forth death, man. Right? The scripture talks about the, how the wages of sin is death. And hey, that's what, you know, one of the, uh, another basic scripture, Amos the ninth chapter on the eighth verse. Behold, the eyes of the Lord power upon the sinful kingdom is going to destroy from the face of the face thereof, man. Because why? Because wickedness is abounding within this society, man. They allow it to grow, man. It's frustrating. All right? So back in the book of uh, Mark the 13th chapter, uh, around about the fifth verse, it says, And your house I answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and they shall deceive many. And when you shall see of wars, and rumors of wars, so when you was going to see wars, all right, and rumors of wars, for instance, you got uh, 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 um, wars happening out there, right, within, you know, the extremities of the earth, but you got rumors of wars as pertaining to this so-called World War Three, which you're already in, by NATO's description, okay? So you was going to hear of wars, and rumors of wars, but these were, as it's going to say in the scriptures, this was an indicator to let you know this is the times that you live in, all right? Let's read that in the scripture, say, if we say, uh, and when you start hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. So you ain't supposed to be, because your foundation, the scripture says in Isaiah, um, pretty much how knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is going to be the stability of that times, okay? So when you're hearing of uh, a, a civil unrest happening, you know, in, in a state near to you, right, in a country near to you, you wasn't supposed to be bugged up, right? Through the understanding of the scriptures, you were supposed to perceive.
perceive that your Abba Shimei Al Shai is going to take you. Basically, he's going to save you out of this uh, tribulation that's going to come upon the face of the earth, man. Right? For instance, the scripture says this uh, how uh, um, pretty much the wicked are going to go up. But the servants of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is going to eat now. There's going to be a situation that's going to be set up to where people are not going to be eating. And what's that situation that's going to be? It's going to be those famines, man. And that's what it's going to be talking about here as well, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? It says, um, it says, And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise up against nation, which we're seeing out here. You're seeing nations rising up against nations. All right, and it says here kingdoms against kingdom. All right, earthquakes in diverse places. So you're getting earthquakes in diverse places, and again, these are all signs that what that the Lord is beginning to return to visit the world that which He created. Okay, right, earthquakes in diverse places, and famines and troubles. See now, troubles is a generic term for what? For all kind of ma all manner of a uh, uh, judgment that the Most High is starting to bring back into the earth, man. See, that's not the conclusion of the judgment that the Most High is going to bring forth because there's going to be a greater judgment that's going to befall, especially you Edomites, man. Okay, that greater judgment is going to have it's going to be those icy years, man. That's the that's that's the ultimate judgment that the Lord is going to impart upon this upon the wicked, man. All right, that's the ultimate judgment. But well, see, all of those things have to needs to come, have to needs come. All right, earthquakes. All right, troubles. So that troubles could be a volcano. Troubles could be a a a, a, a fire or a blow up something. Man, those are the troubles that the Lord could be talking about. Right? See, troubles uh, 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 um, can quantify. Right, it can be quantified as a, a, a numerable amount of events that's going to bring forth grievances of you, upon you, man. All right, that's the troubles that the scripture is talking about. But principally, he also talks about how there's, there's going to be a time uh, of Jacob's trouble. All right, so there's going to come a time where that's going to be principally uh, um, um, where Esau is going to be coming up against you, you Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, man. All right, in the time of martial law. All right, because the scripture talks about in the book of Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, which I might, which I might get. All right, the scripture talks about how it's going to happen to where. In fact, I'll get it now, man. All right, because that's a good scripture. Right, that's you know that's pretty much talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, all right. And then I go back to um I go backwards. I go to Second Ezra, the eighth chapter, and the fifty-fourth verse. All right, this is the book of Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter, and the first verse. It says, "Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of this prophecy which I put into thy mouth, saith the Lord." So the Lord, right, imparted the spirit upon his men, right, to go out and speak. The words of prophecy unto the twelve tribes of Israel, man, as it's instructed within the, um, uh, when you go to Ezekiel 9 and 4, set a mark upon the men that sign cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That was an instruction that you're supposed to take heed to, man. All right? And as for the people that don't take heed to it, all right, they're going to be destroyed, man. See, you got, you know, you got the truth, but you're hiding behind the keyboard. You don't want to, you don't want to push this word. But you, all you want to do is scoff. Hey, you're going to be judged for that, Okay? And then you go to the, on the on the other on the other side of the spectrum. You do go out, but when you go out, you ain't edifying the people, man. You you're still gonna be destroyed. See, the most has got his men set up, all right. That was gonna come out here, and they was gonna teach the people, right, that they're going off, all right, in areas that they gotta uh, 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 you know make adjustments to and, and improve upon and so on and so forth. And then ultimately, once they elect to see, we was gonna be beamed out of it, man. Okay, but see, people got a problem with the men that the Lord selected and sanctified from the foundations of the earth by way of election. All right, because they come as looking like regular people, man. I doth not the scripture say if um if we came pretty much wearing the rem the, the raiment of these elites, that these people will flock to us, man. Okay, but see, they ain't gonna flock to us for the word of the Lord. They was gonna flock to us. For, 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 for how we dress so they can aspire to be the same way, man. That's why you got to be out there in them, in them whorehouses that you call churches, the, the preachers and the pastors, they always dress a certain way, man. Their dressing is always, always meticulous, okay? They always got the nicest car, they always got the nicest suits on, all right? They always speaking in the nicest way and fashion and most relaxed, kind of like how Nate's pushing, uh, kind of like how Nate in the final seven pushes out his, uh, his doctrine, man, all right? Right? That doctrine of if you do this, that, and the third, you could be just like me, but see, that's not that's not the way in which the most high uh, has set this thing up, man. Right? Because their prosperity is within the society, man. The most high set it up to where your prosperity is supposed to be within the spiritual within within, within uh, um the kingdom of heaven, which is gonna be set up by way of um Yahweh side. That's what the Lord set up. Therefore, meaning that the Lord was gonna use the the meek of the earth to push this word out. 
they wasn't gonna come in there looking. Uh, uh, um, they wasn't gonna come looking in a way that 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 was gonna be appealing to this wealth, man. And that's why you got to where a lot of people got a problem with, you know, problem with with, with the men of the law selected to push this truth, okay? Because their mind is, is still stuck in Babylon, man. All right. But see, yo, the scripture also talks about how. Um, scripture, how you doing? The scripture also talks about how. Certain things were set up as a stumbling block to what? To weed out the the, the um the undesirables, man. Okay, because not everybody can not everybody can receive this thing. This thing this thing was for the elect, man. All right, it's a special thing, needful to be held unto. Okay, all right. So back in the book of Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter and the second verse, and caused them to be written on paper. So yeah, back then you had it to where you had scribes writing it down. Now you got it to where a brother will come up with a you know, camera and record it and then upload it on in in, in um. And, and publish it on YouTube and other brothers can watch that, man. That's the same thing that we're happening now. Now it goes to show you that there is reincarnation within the scriptures, man. All right, the brothers that were scribes back then, now they're you know they're behind the camera holding the camera in the Bible. The brothers that were prophets back then, they're out there preaching, man. Just like how the scripture says, the spirit of the, in the book of um, I think it's Corinthians, all right, or Peter's, all right, pretty much how the spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophets, man. Meaning they was gonna come back in that lot, fulfilling that role. Every, every in, 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 you know, every three generations, man, right? Prophesying against this, uh, uh, prophesying against whatever society that they were living, man. All right. So it says here, and cause them to be written in the paper, for they are faithful and true. So these things that you're gonna see within the scriptures are faithful and true. And what scripture comes to mind when you read that? The fact that when the Lord uh, um, had it to wear uh, Habakkuk, is it Habakkuk? I think it's Habakkuk in the book of Habakkuk. He pretty much said the statement that though it tarrieth, wait for it. For it shall surely not tarry. And we go to Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. The Lord likened His word unto a, 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 unto a, a, an arrow shot, shot from a, um, shot from a strong archer, man. Okay. And the scripture says, "Who is going to be it that's going to return it back, man?" In fact, because it's the next chapter, let me just jump on it and come back. So Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. And then I'll go to straight. Um, I'll start from the top, man. It says, "Woe, which is destruction, be unto thee, Babylon and Asia." A war unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Okay, those are all terminologies that we know in the scriptures as to um, pertain to America, man. All right, it says there, gird up yourself with sackcloth, which is, which is a state of uh, uh, of mourning. Okay, because you're gonna be put into a state of mourning by way of what? Because the scripture says, in one day you was gonna have famines, death, and destruction, but also you was gonna have the loss of check, loss of uh, uh, um, uh, children, and all of that, man. Right, you're gonna you're gonna have it to where a, a lot of people's gonna be, you know, they're gonna they was gonna get that judgment in one day, man. Okay, so it says there, um, gird up yourselves. Oh, see, it says it there in the scriptures. That's a spirit. It says, gird up yourselves with sackcloth and and hair, and be well your children, and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand, man. And that's the, that's the message that we're pushing forth, out here, man. Okay, through the fear that through the fear of what's coming, he was going to return back onto Yah by Shimei and that's for the, the elect of Israel, man. All right, that's for the 12 tribes that the, the elect of the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. They was going to take heed to that fearful words that we're pushing out there, that fear mongering, like people say, right? But we see through the, through the, through the, through the fear of the Most High, we persuade men. That's what the scripture says. All right, second is the 16th chapter, and it says. A sword is set upon you. What's a sword do? A sword is an instrument for executing judgment. A sword is set upon you. And who is it that may turn it back? Okay. The Lord said it to where a sword is, is set upon you. And you, what are you going to do? You're going to do another referendum? Are you going to have an, another a NATO uh, 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 nuclear meeting? No. You ain't going to be able to turn back the judgment of the Lord that's been set for you. Because the scripture talks about how if the wicked, if, if the wicked be increased, Right, they are increased for the sword. Okay, right. So you got to wear all of these Edomites are having all kind of freak, you know, uh, 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 children's and so on and so forth because they got the, you know, they got the, the, the science and technology now. Now they can, they can uh, avert their, you know, their uh, inherent infertilities. Okay. Now you got to wear they're having all kind of freak numbers of children of tuplets and so on and so forth. But see, the Lord allow them to do that because the scripture talks about how if they be increased, they are increased for the sword. Man. Okay, so now you got to wear all the people that were, you know, that, that rose up against the men of the Lord, that rose up against your house, all right, that, that cursed the Mosai and so on and so forth. They're upon the face of the earth right now, all right? They're upon the face of the earth right now, right? To do, doing what? Right? Waiting upon upon their own judgment, man. 
they're waiting to see the judgment, man. Okay, now let's get back into the scriptures. I read a little bit more of this, and then I'll go back onto the fifty second verses, the fifteenth. All right, grown men. <laughs> All right, it says, "A fire is sent among you, and who who is it that may quench it? His plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away?" Right? <laughs> it says there, uh, 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 "May any man drive away a hungry lion in the woods?" All right, or we may one quench the fire in the stubble, right, when it hath begun to burn. So that's what the Lord likened unto this judgment that's coming about. It's going to be like a fire or a hungry lion in the woods, man. You ain't going to be able to say, look, you're going to, you know, you can go, you know, you ain't going to be able to avert that judgment, man. Okay, so back in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, right, and the third verse, it says, um, Fear not the imaginations against thee, and let not the incredulity of them that trouble thee and that speak against thee. Right? So, as for the men of the Lord, if you know you got into where you got scoffers and Esau pushing all kind of disinformation and this, that, and the third, the scripture talks about how we ain't supposed to be dismayed at that fact, man. Right? All right, we ain't supposed they ain't supposed to shake us up or anything like that. That's okay. So, so you're talking, okay? You're you're fulfilling your lot, man. Because you, you, you was back in the day scoffing and talking against the middle Lord back in the back 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 then when your house I was in the scene. How are you was scoffing against the prophets Elijah and, and all of that man? Okay, so so guess what? You're just doing your job, man. Now the question is, am I doing my? That's the important thing. Because I hope I'm of the elect. And now I know you're not. All right. See, that's the that's the main thing. Man. All right. Now let's get back into the scriptures. It, it, it says there. Um. The fifth verse, it says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the earth, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. 